Hello and welcome to my presentation about facial action unit recognition in the wild with multitask CNN self-training for the EmotionNet challenge. My name is Philip Werner. I'm from the Neuroinformation Technology Group of the Otto von Guericke University Magdeburg in Germany. This is joint work with Frag Sachsen and Ayub Alamadi. The EmotionNet challenge was run on the EmotionNet dataset, which is a facial expression dataset within the wild conditions. In the wild conditions means that there is a huge variety in the data and that there are challenges involved like partial occlusion, challenging um, illumination, low image quality and resolution, non-frontal head pose, yeah, and also the data includes artworks like statues, drawings, or computer graphics. The EmotionNet dataset is annotated with facial action units, which are kind of building blocks for describing facial behavior. Action units may appear in any combination, so this is a multi-label problem. Action units, for example, um, are rising of the eyebrows, which are uh, action unit one or two, and um, Parting of the lips, for example, is action unit 25. The challenge task uh, was to recognize action units in the wild. So binary classification on that data we have uh, seen before in the slide. The challenge involved uh, 23 action units, which we see here, um, including expression action units and also six head pose action units. The challenge organizers also evaluated the models regarding um, a subset of the action units, uh, which was used in the 2018 EmotionNet challenge, these 12 action units, which I highlighted here. The EmotionNet dataset consists of four parts, the training set, the optimization set, the validation set, and the test set. The training set is by far the largest data set with uh, 944,000 images, but it was only labeled by an algorithm and only with 12 of the action units. So this is a quite weak label source. The optimization set in contrast is quite small, only 25,000 images, but fully labeled uh, with manual labels. The validation and the test set have all labels, but the labels were not available to the challenge participants. Instead, um, we had to submit our um, predictions and got the uh, results. And for the validation set, we had, had five submissions and for the test set, one submission, which um, yeah, was the final challenge result then. The uh, ranking, of the challenge was done with um, the mean of the F1 measure and the accuracy. Now let's have a look at our approach. Here I will show you five aspects. First, the face registration, then multi-label classification with CNNs, then the two main novelties, which are a specific form of multitask learning and applying self-training. And last but not least, I will show you the CNN architectures and uh, talk about the ensemble we use. The face registration is done in three steps. The first is face detection, second is localization of 68 landmarks, and the third is applying a transformation to the image which minimizes uh, the landmark distance to a reference face. There's a trade-off regarding the zoom we want to use for the registration. On the one hand, the expression action units require details. And on the other hand, um, the pose action units require context because they are not defined relative to the camera, but relative to the body. So we have to see the body of the person. That's why we use two zooms. So two registered images per face are created. In the upper part of the image, you see several examples for the expression registration. And in the lower part, you see several examples for the pose registration. 
for the classification, we use two multi-label CNNs, one for the expression action units on the left here, and one for the pose action units on the right. As you see, the, for the pose CNN, we also use the head pose relative to camera, which is fed um, into the CNN as um, three angles, yaw pitch and roll, provide, as provided by OpenFace. The outputs of the CNN are activated with the sigmoid function, and the training is done with binary cross entropy loss, and the loss is weighted to handle class imbalance and also to adjust the training speed of the individual action units. One of the key concepts of our approach is that we use a specific multitask learning. This involves a special strategy for using the data. As mentioned before, that there are a training set and an optimization set provided by the organizers. The optimization set is used as a primary data set in our approach, and the training set is used as a secondary data set in our approach because it's weakly labeled. The optimization set is split into a training and a validation part, which are called opt train and opt well. Now, the question is how to learn with these differently labeled data sets, and our answer is that we use separate outputs for the same action units of different data sets. For example, action unit one has two outputs, one for the optimization set and one for the training set. For the test cases, we always use the opt output, but in general, we can benefit from the weekly labeled much bigger training set due to this multi-task learning concept. The second key concept of our approach is self-training. The idea is quite simple. We train a first model, which is called teacher, and then we use this model to generate pseudo labels of a large unlabeled or weakly labeled data set, which is in our case, a training set. Then we train a second model, which is called student. And for this, we use both the manual labels of the optimization set and the pseudo labels of the training set. We also add noise using data augmentation and dropout. The self-training process may be repeated using the student of one iteration as a new teacher in the next iteration. In our approach, we use three architectures. The first is called ownNet. It's a straightforward self-designed CNN using alternating convolution and max pooling layers. The details are in the paper. The second is a mobile net V3 large. We use it uh, with the weights pre-trained um, on image net and fine tune it on the emotion data. The third is the efficient net. And here we also use uh, pre-trained weights for initialization. Next to these architectures, we also evaluate an ensemble of models. An ensemble means that we use multiple models for the prediction, and then we calculate the means of the model's output scores for the final decision. Now let's have a look at the experimental results. Here you see results we obtained on the OpWell set, so our own validation set, which is part of, of the of uh, optimization set provided by the organizers. You see several teacher models and also student models. And um, at the bottom, you see the fusion results, which are the ensembles. So what do we see here? First, the student models are always better than the teacher models. So the self-training really helps. Second, the multitask learning is better than only using uh, one output per action unit. And also um, multitask learning is better than only training with opt train set. And third, we see that the ensemble results are better than all the single model results. 
Now let's have a look at the final challenge results, which were calculated by the organizers of the challenge on the validation and test set. In these two columns, we see the results for the 2020s 20, uh, challenge. And we reach with our result the second place, but we reach it with a very small gap to the winner and a quite marked gap, gap to the third place. If we have a look at the 2018 challenge results, we see um, that we, with our approach, reach the best result that is known so far on this data set. Finally, let's come to a conclusion. We did action unit recognition in the wild with multitask learning and self-training. Multitask learning means in our context that we use a CNN with one action unit output per data set. And self-training means um, that we generate and use pseudo labels. We really recommend to try both of these concepts Try multitask learning if you combine multiple data sets and try self-training if a large amount of unlabeled or weekly labeled data is available. With our approach, we reached the second place in the EmotionNet 2020 challenge and also achieved the best results on the EmotionNet 2018 data known so far. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have a question, feel free to drop me a mail.